Hello everyone, my name is Jason Oliver, and I am here with my two co-hosts for an embarkment upon another spooky October season. Ooh. Ooh. Verily. I feel like verily. somebody should have said verily in this movie. I know, maybe they did. I only had subtitles on for half of it. That's Jeff, everyone. Say Hi. hello, Jeff. Hi, everybody. Welcome, How's it going? Welcome, Jeff, to, to this episode. And uh, also, Chuck. He was making spooky sounds. Say hello. I'll have the hello. Hello, thy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are um, discussing for our first week of October something quite spooky indeed. Very spooky. And a, and a very um, archetypal spooky creature. We are going to be discussing Robert Eggers' 2016-2015 film, The Witch. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. The young version of The Witch? Not spooky. Decidedly not spooky. Well, I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> that That's a pretty good trope, right? Like, that's... Yeah. That's the, the the witch is always ugly, but the witch can glamour themselves to be temptresses. Yes. Well, that witch did a good job. Yes. Mm. I, that, who was that? Because she looked really familiar. Uh, Sarah Stevens. Uh, not really in much of anything else. Hmm. I mean, like a few other things, but not much. That's her. She's Australian. Yep. She's pretty. Um, I feel like we well, you know what she kind of reminds me of. Um, Margaret Coyley. Uh, yep, exactly. A little yep. bit, yeah. Yep. That's Margaret. probably that's probably where things were. We're getting most, uh, most definitely. We're, that's yeah. that's who that reminds me of. Um, she was a model primarily, it seems. Um, well, yes, this movie, The Witch, Rob, Robert Eggers, his first film, correct? I think I, yes. it's the one yes. that put him on the map. Regardless, I mean. And um, also the first film for um, Anya Taylor Joy. Um, Anya is how Robert pronounces her name in the extra features on the the Blu-ray. So I'm going with Anya. I've only I've always thought Anya. I always thought it was Anya, but okay. But but I we'll, we'll cover both our bases right there. So maybe okay. it's interchangeable. One of the the panel members called her Anya at a Q and A thing, and I was like, oh, maybe they got it wrong. Kind of figure Robert Eggers has got it right because he worked with her for like a year making this thing, but whatever. Um, it's her first film, too. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, and the shot her right out of like, like a rocket. I mean, It really did. And it's kind of hard to believe this is not even 10 years old. She's I know. She's been around for, I feel like, it forever. And um, yeah, this was her first movie. And she looks like a baby, but I think she was like 20. Like yeah, 18, I always 19, thought 20. when this first came out, she was, I always thought maybe she was like 14, 15 years old, but she was, yeah, she was almost 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. kind of kind of wild how young she looks and continues to look. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Um, I did not see this in the theater. I did. Which is kind of odd, but I did not. I caught it at home. Um, turns out I have seen all of Ager's movies in the theaters. I have only seen the lighthouse in the theater. That's the only one. Northman hmm. I also caught at home. Actually, I watched a Northman with COVID in LA in our tiny little Airbnb. That sucked. Just just Boo. bacon, just bacon in that COVID in that tiny little Airbnb. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I need something to do. I'm kind of pissed off. I have COVID on vacation, so I watched the Northman. I liked it. I liked the Northman. I kind of got a lot of mixed reviews, but yeah, I was I was mixed on it. I quite enjoyed it. Um, I also quite enjoyed the Lighthouse, and yeah. I'm very excited for the new Robert Eggers take on Nosferatu. That I am here for. Quite looks new. like a little bit of mix of both versions previous too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm still it, like, yeah. I'm still like flabbergasted that William Defoe is not playing. Nosferatu, considering he's played Nosferatu before. I know. <laughs> not, and he's going to be in Nosferatu been, and he not playing Nosferatu. Oscar nominated. Yeah. For playing Max Shrek. Yeah. 
and then on, on top of that, uh, he is being he's being brought in as Van Helsing mm-hmm. in a story that initially did not have a Van Helsing. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. He probably didn't want to play the monster again. Well, he's probably like, you know, is this just what you think of me? Uh, right. That's kind of to you. <laughs> kind of brilliant, though, the way they did this. Like when this movie was announced, Defoe was immediately attached to it, and everyone just thought yeah. he was going to be Nosferatu, which is yeah. pretty cool because yeah. they didn't say Professor who, Professor Albin Eberhardt von Franz. Von Franz. Von Franz. Von Franz. Von Franz. I mean, I um, guess technically, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, I guess he. I mean, I don't think that character. Uh, that character is not in the original. Original. No, I don't believe um, so. Because because the, they also kind of they don't really have like a dedicated uh, Van Helsing counterpart, and they don't have a dedicated. Um, or well, no, they kind of yeah, they do have a um, uh, Renfield. So anyway, anyway, um, I I and, uh, and I am Anya Taylor Joy. She was supposed to be in it, I believe, as Ellen Hutter, but had she's to playing drop. somebody else. Well, no, I think she had to drop out. Um, I should think that she had a um, scheduling conflict with yeah. some other film, and regrettably could not be in this. So they um, replaced her with Lily Rose Depp. Hmm. Um, which feels like a bit of a downgrade if I'm being honest, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> and Bill Skarsgård as Nosferatu, which I promise I know, you man. that's going to be the better film of his this year. <sighs> oh, he's had a few this year, and I think they've all been kind of bad. I thought the uh I thought the one where um where Bob Berger is, is talking. Yeah, yeah, I thought that one actually was was received better. Better. Is uh, that good though? Uh, better. I mean, a lot of a lot of things are better. Than like I, no, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, you, well, everything I'm going to see this year is better than the crow. Um, I, I was, promise. Here's yeah. the funny thing. So I went to I went to the White Sox game um, last week, and. Um, and the White Sox are terrible, obviously, right? They're yeah. they're easily on pace to set the record for MLB losses in a season, and they lost again. And um, there were two. There was a couple that was there. Um, a uh, well, the guy was a Mets fan. Who that's who they play. And there was a the woman was a White Sox fan, and he was trying to like. He was the Mets fan. He was glad they the Mets won, but he was also like trying to figure out like what the hell is so wrong with the White Sox? He was incredulous that the Mets could only win by two po- by, by two runs. They won two to nothing. And he's like, he's like, the Mets just, we're just not, we're just not that good. And his girlfriend and wife, remember, says, well, well, not that good is, is a lot different than from, than whatever we are. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> The the gap is still huge, right? Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and fair enough. That's a good way of of, uh, of of talking about the crow, and that's just a little tease for next February or whenever we do our <laughs> year end list. Uh, the crow is already going to be discussed. I promise you that. <laughs> what about the unless, witch? And, unless I go see the uh, the Matt Walsh <laughs> movie that's coming out. But yeah, let's talk about the witch. One well, movie done, that would have been a little Eggers breakdown there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> and, and we and we touched upon the the Bill Skarsgård, who you know it seems like is in most movies these days. So yeah, for better or worse. Yeah, or whatever we are. <laughs> or whatever, whatever the, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do we have here? We have a super fucking period accurate New England folk tale. It's so period accurate that one of the first things you see in the, in the end credits is a description as to, we, we, we did our homework people. So yeah. if you didn't understand what people were saying, that's on you. Yeah, there was this screening <laughs> in Salem at the Q and A, and there were all these all these uh, Salem witch nerds and professors, and they were all just like, "We're the, usually the ones that are disappointed when we consult on movies like this because when we see it, we're just like, ugh, we had to make a concession for that. We had to make a concession for that. Like all this shit sticks out. It's like nothing for them stuck out in this as non-period accurate." 
Um, but do but do witch nerds have horse friends? <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> well, the horse could have used a horse friend because. Yeah, well, poor animals across the board here in this movie. Yeah, well, poor everyone, honestly. Yeah, true, true, um, true. <laughs> not good to be an isolated family in in the 17th century New England. Um, Calvinists, Pur- Puritan Calvinists, I think is what they are. Um, I only know that they're Puritan for sure, right? Like, 100% I think, Puritan. I think, I think Puritan is like the is like a... It's kind of Calvinism. Yeah. Um, they share a lot of the same tenets. The The main tenet, which I did a little research on this, because there's a scene between the father and Caleb, his son, when they were distressed over, the son is distressed over the state of his little brother's soul, who is stolen in this movie. That's kind of the catalyst. But... Um, the uh, there's this back and forth about it, and the father's trying to impress upon his son that um, it's not for us to worry about such things. He's either one of he's either with God or not. And um, the Puritans they had like this they had this predetermination in their belief system. It's kind of wild. Like they believed that God already knew who the the elect were going to be, and those that will that will die and then join him and or her, or whatever the fuck, Puritan God is definitely a male, um, in heaven, right? And then everybody else was just doomed. Because like, it was all preor- pre- preordained. But they, but no one on earth could know that their own state or the state of others, right? Um, I got to thinking about that a little bit, and I started to think, well, what does that do to your psyche? Like your mental state, to to know that you could be as pious as possible, and, and the Puritans are also very, very um, uh, like personal relationships with with the Creator, like and personal personal spiritual experiences were very important to them. Like there wasn't a ton of like communal worship; it, it was all very between you and God, right? Um, you and the Lord. Um, but what does that do to your spirit? To, to like, you could be, do everything right, but still not be one of the select. Like, and to 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 me, I, I don't know. I'm sure this is not a novel idea or thought, but um, to me, it almost seems like that's where this idea of these of the witch comes in, right? Like this being that is so clearly not one of the elect. So so that contrast to be able to see and point and to and to convict you know someone on those grounds could potentially make you feel better about your position when you die right even though yeah. you can't know that's kind of why i don't like time travel and i know this is kind of like a weird thing to say but if you can travel in time right everything is predetermined mm-hmm. and if everything is predetermined it doesn't matter what the hell you do And that's why I'm curious how any religious person would ever think everything is predetermined because your prayer, your, you know, however devout or pious you are, does it matter? Can you ruin your, your standing in, in God's eyes as one of the select as Jason put it? Like, I don't know. It's just weird to me to think that way. Can you ruin being a select by not being pious, or are you still well, that's going just, to that's heaven? Just, that's just a thing. Like I think it's a, it's it, yeah, it, it confuses me because you you could just be a total shitbag, and under their rules, still be one of the elect, right? But right. but uh, but another part of it is that God only gives grace to those that He knows is of the elect. So that's where these personal experiences come from and that's where this outward piety comes from it's like you're you're showing this that you are in this state of grace right but it all but it 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 creates i think these these circular thoughts in your brain right like the father in this is a perfect example like he doesn't know but he's so overly pious about his form of this religion 
of their religion that that doesn't jive with the rest of of the plantation that he's he's cast out right he's like if you're not going to stop blaspheming then you need to leave he, he's but, too devout right and right, that's but, and it's like it's like is he overcompensating or but then he comes around later and it's that circular argument where he's like it was a sin of pride like i i am not of the elect he 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 decides because because he he allowed himself to put his family in danger and he allowed himself to be prideful in his singular belief that he knew the true way to and path to god right so it's it's just fascinating stuff these puritans like i i don't understand it how you can how you can live with that idea of predetermination you know <laughs> right. I, i'm doubting i'm i'm wondering how you live like that period but uh, but, but okay. i totally but i totally understand how how these these folklorish ideas start to sure. because they 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 help identify an other that yes. can make you feel more comfortable in your situation with god right, right? You're demonizing somebody so right. that you feel yes better. so so a couple of things that i have hear about this is that it kind of comes back around to that whole idea of religion one of the big tenets in in christian religion right is the idea of like the free will and yet yes okay so god allows you to have the free will but not really because because either things are already predetermined and you're stuck on that path no matter what you do or or you do your thing and then you go to heaven and you have all of that stripped from you anyway, where you're just like this happy shining people, the situation where it's like, you're not really who you once were. If everything is taken from you, all of your pain and, and suffering and your experience is removed from you. You're not really the person you were. So you're not really being free to be the person you were. It's, it's a very circular issue that i have when people it's like mm -hmm. but god gave us free will it's like but you're not really believing in that <laughs> you know it's like you, you're you're saying that to make yourself feel better well the, well well i think where where the the there's another offshoot of um of the puritans where they um they don't necessarily believe fully in the predestination other than the fact that one other there's kind of one other wrinkle to it like you could very well be in acceptance of God's grace and and make it to heaven, but here's the rub: <laughs> God is all knowing, so God knows no matter what free will you have, God still knows which of you are going to accept His grace and which of you are going to reject it. No, right? so it's like everyone has a ticket. But not everyone, but a certain group of people have a ticket, but only a select of them will be able to use it when they get to their gate. Well, no, they, 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 by their actions, by their, their free will of their actions and whether or not they accept the grace of God is what prevents them from going to heaven. Yeah, the but ticket's God, no but, good but God, is kind but, of what I meant. Like you, everyone has the potential to have a ticket, but God already knows which ones accept the ticket, if that makes sense right lame yeah, yeah pretty lame huh but, but that's where you get into the, like these really complicated philosophical so, so i have so i have a second philosophical concept <laughs> to consider is this nature in humans as a collective species mm -hmm. to do this or is it religion that makes us exceptionally good at otherizing people well ha uh, hmm so what, that's kind of that's kind of chicken and the egg, right? It's like were we are we predetermined by the species of what we are to be to be self-centered or to be communal or did religion help or some sense of uh, 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 genetic memory from all the religions of the past help us say they're not like us, they're bad. I think it's, I think to me, it's a coping mechanism because of the repressiveness of, of their belief system, right? And I, the society, I tend to agree and, with and, that And the too. society that has been built around it, because if you cast yourself as other, if you, if you now become like, you can almost say in some ways that this, 
that the whole family, once they've been cast out and banished, that they are now in the minds of, even if it's on the other side of the scale, in the minds of the collective, they are the other, yeah. right? They are, they, are, they are on their way to doom. And that's where the witch is, you know, the witch is they able pray to upon it. pray upon that. Right. And, and it becomes almost a self, self-fulfilling prophecy. Yep. The thing you fear, you, you bring into reality, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, which then, okay, and then step it back up to like a 30,000 foot view. This family being isolated is going to any possible problem. They have no help. They have nothing to save them from, you know, like if their house burns down, they're fucked. If the, if the winter is too cold, they're fucked. If they're, you know, it's like if one of them gets sick, they're probably all fucked. If the um, crop goes bad, they're fucked. Exactly. It's, so it's like it's, they, they have ruined themselves by putting that much risk into saying, I'm right and you're wrong, uh, we're gone you know, or whatever. Right. So it is, uh, there is a self-fulfilling prophecy in the realism mm-hmm. side of this movie too, which mm-hmm. is they're, they're screwed. The moment they leave t- the, the settlement, they're done. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I was going to say too, um, you mentioned, is this in the nature of, of man? And I thought you were going to go really to the heart of the question. Like, is this, is the, is the human condition predisposed to othering others? Right. And um, right, yeah. you know, even outside of a religious um, structure, but, but it's an interesting conversation to have because all of this belief system comes from, from, comes from Adam and Eve and the, yeah. and the concept of original sin and it all waterfalls from there. And what your what you believe original sin is, how pervasive that is, because I mean, even Catholicism believes that if you die unbaptized, you don't go to heaven. You stay in limbo. It's like this. <laughs> like where where is this in the Bible? I have no idea. But <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but, it's funny. But they how believe much... it's like this. It's not even purgatory. It's this yeah. place that's that's not in the presence of God, but a little bit better than purgatory. That supposedly, when the end of the world happens, that the you world forgot to get your passport, right? And you're stuck in the airport. Yeah, you're like Tom Hanks in Terminal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, it's like what the hell, man? Where where does all this shit come from? You know, it's it's like it's mental gymnastics. Oh is, my god, there's so much of that because yeah. there's like there there seems to be a lot of belief system that just is not present in original text that they say that they follow to the letter and it's like hmm, where's this coming is it the apocryphal stuff where's where are you getting this stuff from <laughs> you know it's like yeah and i mean and unfortunately a lot of it came from catholic dogma um and <sighs> there's so much ambiguity in the text too that they can prescribe it however the fuck they, and that's, we and, could and, prescribe and, it however we want yeah yeah and then that's you know where you have all of the you know great schism and protestantism church of england first you know and it was like it was like the the puritans are very much against like having religion tied to a um tied to a um governing authority like um they because they again they believed in that very spiritual relationship between the individual and god right separation so, of church and state almost, so they right? so they would be totally yeah. against like national like christian nationalism surprisingly they would be um but but at home it would suck <laughs> but in the greater in your yeah. home do whatever you want but in my home it's gonna suck here because <laughs> then you're the one that determines what what yeah. everything means not the yes. state so it's mm-hmm. it's it's not even like uh, how do you say it it's not in good faith that they think this. They want to have more control. Mm. The individual wants to have more control of how this shit is prescribed instead of having somebody else tell them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean and absolutely and that's kind of where, you know, you went from the the the, the Catholic concept of how you can essentially buy your way to heaven, right? Like indulgences became the scourge of of the corruption of of Catholicism. It's the whole reason Martin Luther left and, and created his own brand 
of Christianity was because he he saw the corruption and that anybody who who could pay could pay an archbishop they'd bless him tell him to say 10 Hail Marys and then they would they would be taking years off of their time in purgatory right right um, because that's the other funny thing about Catholicism unless you're a saint nobody goes straight to heaven <laughs> you have to if you if you're good enough not to go to hell you're still are going to spend some time in purgatory so all and these you talk to Peter right all these indulgences were ways to to pay the church to take time off of your your time in the Tom Hanks terminal. Yeah. Right. Jesus if this Christ. isn't like wild stuff, right? Of... And you can see why why people like Martin Luther would be like, that's fucking bullshit. And why it would create uh, he said that the quote is exactly <laughs> when, 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 when he put when he when he when he pinned the articles of, of separation or whatever they were called on the church door, he said, This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, we, a, if we ever make a movie about Martin Luther, Chuck, I'm casting Jason as Martin Luther. Please do, please do. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I mean that that is like the modern or the the past day, like almost like televangelism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're taking advantage of the people to, or the the gospel to make money, right? Not not to really purely bring people to the gates of heaven or whatever oh, exactly. just monetizing you're, you're, it you're you're preying upon the people who need something the most right whether yes. it's hope whether it's salvation whatever it is but but to get there eh, you gotta buy something from us or you gotta send you know it's the idea of like the little prayer envelopes right you send in five bucks eh, didn't come true for you it must have been your fault but if you give us another five bucks we'll try a little harder to 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 reword what you need it's it's terrible it's terrible it's weird like i get it for the time like back then shit was tough eat it was hard to get food it was hard like a lot of things were just difficult nowadays i don't know how people even buy into that like i know there are people who are having a tough time right absolutely 100 percent. but 30 to 40 to 50 percent of the people i know that are catholic are pretty well to do yep and they well, still are not like God fearing or like I don't understand of, how they're God fearing enough to pay money and shit. So a lot of a lot of modern most modern Catholicism that a lot of that was was done away with the the paying for indulgences and things like that. They're they're, they're still tithing right every time they go to the every, church. And, pretty much every Christian institution yeah. has that built into it. Yeah. Um, and that's not necessarily like taking time off your time in purgatory. It's just your duty to, but I, to the I, parish. I bet a lot of them, though, do feel that if they didn't give the money, there's some guilt there with God. Oh, well, well, I would, say, I would more, say it's probably more from the guy next to you. There would be society. Maybe, yeah. there, would, there, would be, there would be pressure within the community, right? Because it's a status thing. So again, you get into pride, but then yep. again, if you can afford to give and you don't, you're getting into you're getting into the sin of greed, right? So it's all about balancing your your scales with old Saint Peter, right? Yeah. I want to go hang out with the witches. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, I was going to say, all right. The other the <laughs> other like major subtextual thing going on in this movie is is burgeoning female sexuality and. Well, that's a big no-no in Christianity, and, and 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 how that frightens, yes, especially a puritanical society, right? Yeah. And how it definitely frightens a a small family on their own who have been banished. And what do we do, right? I mean, there are so many little creepy moments in this movie that allude to this decision, right? That's going to have to be made. We can't do this on our own. Because, I mean, it's going to descend into some pretty gross stuff <laughs> if, <laughs> if they don't reintegrate in some way to their former society, right? Right. Yeah, I, um, so, yeah, so basically the, the opening scene is Ralph Ennison, by the way, if he wanted to narrate anything and everything, go for it because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that 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 voice is is something else uh but yeah basically he's like we've been saying he he stands up to the to the uh to the to the township that they came from basically it's like we won't change so we're gonna leave which the family does now we do find out later that his wife does stand up for it a little bit basically saying 
when things don't go well for them, she quickly points out, we probably should have made a different decision uh, in so many words. Like she, she basically rebuffs the fact that they shouldn't have left to be on their own. And then they, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the time she's pregnant with um, their fifth child. So right now they have a teenage daughter my impression was it was like early teenage, like 13, yes, 14. Definitely. Then they have two twins who are like eight or nine or something like that. And then they have a baby on the way. Oh, what don't forget that? Caleb. I forgot Caleb, who's like 10. Oh, yeah. Caleb, who's like 12. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I forgot about Caleb. Yeah. So this, yeah, this is the fifth, the fifth child is on the way. So they leave and then we pick up the story proper with them on their new settlement where they have they have some they have some barn animals they have some goats they have one goat in particular that the two twins like to talk to uh, that's creepy that's weird isn't it i mean that's that's pretty weird like, i don't know children, that it would have been talking to things is weird in movies and creepy <laughs> it's definitely creepy in this movie but i think it would probably pretty common back probably then. common yeah you, you friend an animal on the I do know at some whatever. point, at some point though, I do know that Thomason, Thomason has had fucking enough of that little girl singing to the goat. She, sure. She's like, we I will all, not I abide mean, this. We all have. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I'm done with it. Which is kind of funny that um, Anya Taylor Joy starred in a movie with someone actually named Thomason several well, years yeah. later. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Because that's not a because <laughs> that's not a common name anymore. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, so basically, uh, so the the child has come, and and you kind of see very, very stark roles that everybody plays in the family. Right, you have the father who does all of the work on the land. You have the mother who does all of the work inside the house. You have the eldest daughter kind of acts as like a, um, as like a nanny. She's like nanny and farmhand. Yeah. 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 She's kind of trapped in between because Caleb is not really old enough to do a lot, but he is learning how to hunt. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the, the two kids are just goofing off all the time. And he helps with the crop, <laughs> but the crop is is contaminated. It's rot. Yeah, yeah there's a blot. Yeah. A blight. A blight, yeah. Yeah. There's a blop. There's a blop. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's some blop in the in the in the outhouse, I'm sure. Yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> so anyway, so but she yeah. you know, she milks the cow, she collects the eggs, she beds the the animals at night. Like she's she tends to to the animals and the children, essentially. Yeah. And which kind of makes sense because, like, the mom's got the inside the house business to do and the father is away hunting or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, so or doing, like, the real manual labor. Because Ralph really Innocent see, is fucking ripped. In this we movie. don't really see a whole yeah. lot of what the mother is doing, though, because pretty much right away we see her in grief. And we need to talk about that. Yeah, go for that. Well, um, Thomason is is babysitting her baby brother Joel. Sam, Sam, Samuel. Yeah, Joel came from came from Samuel. Yes, and um, I don't think that's a biblical name at all, is it? Joel. Joel. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe it is. Um, but she's doing peekaboo. This was in the. This was in all the trailers, right? Uh, I always remember this from the trailers and she's doing the peekaboo and she's looking down and the camera is like, you know, it's, it's a two shotter. So it's like looking down at the baby and then looking up at her doing peekaboo. And um, she does the peekaboo like the fourth time and the camera looks down when she opens her eyes or puts her hands away from her, her eyes and the baby's gone. It was like literally two seconds, right? And the baby's gone and you don't see, she looks up, you don't see any indication of, the baby anywhere it's not crawled away no animals taken it it's like just vanished right and then it jumps in time to just well wait she does 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What is she? She what runs into the, the woods. Yes, she she runs into the woods, assumingly to to look and see if yeah. And you do see a red cloak it. figure running through the woods. Did, too. Does she see the red cloak? I don't know if she sees it, but we see it. Yeah. We see it. Yeah. yeah. I, that see, I don't know that she does. I don't um, think she actually ever sees the witch, does she? Well, I don't. I don't think so. Not until the, she, well, at a point yeah. she will, but <laughs> but I don't think she. I mean, because Caleb does. Mm-hmm. The the animals do. I'm assuming. I'm semi surprised that they do show the figure running through the woods here because this is a, a really good movie and you trying to determine if that's actually happening. The, right. Exactly. But the fact that they show the witch is like, are we just seeing it? Because if it's just us seeing it, then it's there. So right? to me, to me, yeah. obviously you can take most of this as metaphor, and I prefer to. But I agree. Yeah, I think uh, I, I have a read had, on it too. If the movie has like one kind of weakness to me is that it, it makes it a little bit too definitive that there is a witch. Right. right? Yeah. Um, I would prefer more am- ambiguity, especially in a movie like this. There was a movie a few years later called Hagazuzu. And it is, it's a, it's a perfect illustration of the witch is a creation of society. It's a creation of the community. And everyone, everyone, assumes this woman is a witch and she's treated like a witch. She's an outcast in the community. And because of that energy, she becomes the thing they fear. Right. Right. Mm. And it's so There's another movie badass. like that. I can't remember what it's called, but you know what else does this really well until like the last third. And you'll probably laugh at me for saying it, but the village. Yeah. 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 Oh it yeah. Really I does mean, that, a good job of it for the first two. I actually the like the first two acts of that movie. Uh, well, yeah. The, the, yeah, my problem was, was that I had figured out what, was going on and then i was like i'm pretty sure this is what's going on and then it then it was revealed to me and i hated life for about three days it was a pretty bad because, ending yeah it's because it's bad uh but anyway um <laughs> but one thing i was you know it's like i i, I had an actual angry reaction in the theater to it i did I even, too i, I was even, like i even i even about 20 minutes before that i was like man i even said this out loud i think to susan i was like man they're gonna it's gonna be in like fucking central park or some bullshit like that isn't it and it mm-hmm. sure shit <laughs> yeah um one thing i was gonna say is that another movie that does this very well uh, on a different level but is very good at like just letting you think about it is is the Blair Witch Project yeah, yeah because you just sure. don't see it I mean and right. and happy 25th anniversary to the Blair Witch Project yeah do you see that's getting a proper restoration too like it's like fantastic. the original it's never been on video in the proper aspect ratio or um or uh digital good. format Good. They're, they're I, I mean, like meticulously going back and making sure all like the different film stocks and digital stocks are are back to where they should be. Nice. I uh, I really like that movie a whole lot. Um, I know it's kind of controversial for some, but for me, I, I like it. Too. I was into it. I also anyway. just love all of the hype and the yes, marketing. everything about it. Everything it really about cool. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was it was a good time to be going to the theater to see a movie it, it that's was. spooky. Um, but the but yeah, because uh, I also had a read just like absolutely everything was not what we thought it was. You know, it's like that because like th- when we get to the end, we'll talk about it a little bit more, obviously, but but she goes to sleep right before the big ending. So that, I mean, you could just write that off as a dream or of sure. a nightmare or whatever, you know, and um there's just there there's like i think there's an entire read of it to where there is no witch at all which we and we don't really definitively know what happened to the twins either no we don't um and the um but the because like the first thing they do when the baby goes missing they just chalk it up to a wolf ran by and just snatched it on the way by like john goodman a, a on dingo, the motorbike a dingo ate my baby <laughs> yeah. and, or not john not john goodman but uh, uh the the guy the hired hand in the uh, raising arizona swing you know oh, just drives God, by yeah. and grabs the baby on the, on the on the harley yeah, yeah. yeah. you know it's like that's <laughs> you know that's what's going on there it's like a, the dog you didn't just, hear just, you didn't hear the motorcycle yeah yeah, right. mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> 
<laughs> but but, course, uh, but yeah, but I mean, of they, course, it's questionable whether that character even exists in in Raising Arizona. Which sure, if you want to if you want to hear our thoughts on that, folks, go back uh, about a year or yep. so and we talk about it. Um, the um, yeah, but the I mean, obviously, Thomason knows it couldn't have been anything natural because of how. But she just kind of like. Well, if it's an animal, I mean, because it doesn't take long before everything becomes her fault right. in the eyes of her mother, right. which is also interesting because there you have a little bit of generational gender traitor mm -hmm. kind of read too, and some jealousy, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Like because as we kind of continue on, and the you know the the strife really picks up. They're, they're having a hard time hunting. They're having a hard time with the crops. They're having a hard time living. They're losing kids all over the fucking place. <laughs> one one of the one things, point, they got the twins. They got the twins tied to the fence. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah. That killed me yeah. so much. Yeah. It's like, it's like those old leashes you used to see kids yeah. get put on. Oh, I totally. Hated that. I hated seeing that. But anyway, yeah, mom. Mom kind of goes catatonic almost right away. She, yeah. she like retreats into a constant prayer, constant basically. prayer. And isn't she always like knitting or something in bed? I like, can't tell. It looked like she was just laying there, like yeah. crying. She might be knitting, um, probably to take her mind off it. And then this is when we really see kind of Caleb being pushed in growth by his father yes. a little bit. Um, well, yeah, like it's you, like, what's you, wrong you with you? You gotta grow up some, like, <laughs> yeah, right it's now. Like, it's like, what, what's wrong with you? You're 12 years old. You should be out there handling this rifle and getting this right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Times are tough, man. <laughs> and Ani Taylor Joy, she's she's got grief, obviously, but she's trying to make sense of their world. Well, and she's also, she's got to raise the twins because the mom is worthless yeah. at this point, you know. A bit. She's, I mean, she's, she's taking care of everything. That's why I said, like, we don't really know what the mom's indoor duties are because we didn't get she, time to see him. <laughs> we didn't get time to see him. She's like completely in grief and there's really no, no meal to cook because they're, they're there's no food essentially like stale bread at this point. They're breaking yeah. bread at dinner basically. Yeah. 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 And um, so one thing that William, which is Ralph Ennison, he's like, we can send Thomason off to serve another family. That will be one less mouth to feed. You know, and basically, they 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 could probably get something for her, because you probably. used to be able to sell your kids off like that. Yeah, whatever a dowry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then on top of that, um, he has taken his father's silver something chalice he, or something. It was a cup. Yeah, it was a, cup, a silver yeah. cup. Yeah. It was, he took it, it from wife. his wife's father. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, was it her father? Okay. Cup. Yeah. Okay. So it was, it, it's never fully explained the significance of the cup other than it was her father's cup. And they came over from England and the sense to me, and she even chastises um, William for implying that her attachment to it is one of a vanity She's like, you know, it's not like that. That's not what it means to me. And you it's, know, it's probably, probably it's probably it's, the it's last a, it, thing it, she has of her family. It's the last thing she has of her family. It, it probably remembers her, reminds her of her father. Um, but it does it does allude to the fact that she maybe came from some sort of affluence, right? And this is oh, possibly the least life that she could possibly have imagined living in the new world, right? Yeah, right? it's like you know, what what she's married to is just a. A man who has really nothing but pride in the six pack. And then there is, I do believe, that jealousy of Thomason because Thomason, by nature of being a, a young, beautiful woman, does have something that's very desirable in any society. She's got a future. Mm -hmm. And it could take her away from the hell, but instead of being happy about that, she I th is more inclined to other her as well and she's mired in it she's yeah. like look my life turned out shit mm -hmm. it's and it's, it's, it's i a, expect it yours in, to it descends too. into jealousy yeah yeah like in so there, there you go there's there's another sin yes yes the only sin that is not here really is uh gluttony 
because they ain't got no food. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you can be gluttonous for other things. Gluttony doesn't sure, have to be sure. just about food. But yes, I get your joke. <laughs> well, but like, you know, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, like, this is, so after William takes the cup, this is when he's he's taken Caleb out for hunting. They're going to try to shoot a rabbit. And, um. Well, they're checking traps and a rabbit shows up. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and that and that's what he spent the, the cup money on. He, he traded it for some, um, traps. traps. Yeah. 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 And so Caleb gonna... asks where he got the money for the traps anyway and he tells him about the cup yeah yeah now he caleb this is when he asks about his baby brother's soul mm -hmm. yep and he's like uh, it ain't for us to say burr, 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 mm -hmm. you know and oh hey by the way you know his secrets are going to make friends right now son and i sold your mother's cup mm -hmm. but you can't tell anybody there's and there's another secret later too because as Caleb deals in secrets, you get the impression. Um, Caleb, Caleb does, but he's burdened with them. Yes, by, but, by but, the, but but then though he is he he forces a secret onto Thomason when he goes missing. Yeah, true. So so he does he he's he's kind of burdening her. Well, I but, learned it from watching you, Dad. Right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but he's he's actually got an altruistic reason. He does. But it's still. But it, but then it's couched in this secret that ends up getting Thomason in trouble. But the problem with that is is it's a different kind of secret, right? Because right. Thomason insists on going. She wasn't supposed to wake up. He was just yeah, right. supposed to go out on his own, and he want he didn't want to have to burden anyone with that. He wanted to take it all upon himself. Yeah. Whereas his father unnecessarily burdens his son with this with this secret that then causes him to lie to his mother. Right. right? And lying is bad too. Yeah. These are not these are hey, all these sins. people these, these are all sins. Yes. Um in their world there and, and he's not chastised for that sin. His no. father his father is grateful for it. Yes. Yeah. So they've all got a little bit of the devil in them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, really, honestly, the one who probably doesn't, though, is actually Thomason. Well, exactly. Exactly. But, but, uh, but she is, but, you know. But, yeah. she, but she also is kind of at the end of her rope. Yeah. You know, she doesn't want, doesn't want to deal with these obnoxious twins. I don't blame her. But <laughs> Well, she's also about to be sent away. But yeah. then, well, then she's, dealt, then she's dealt that blow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, it is. It is. I think the irony, and one of the great ironies of this movie, is that the one least, I guess, the one, the mo one most pure, let's say, is the one most corrupted, or the one that's most constantly accused, or yes, of being a problem. Because you could, you could see her at the end as being the most liberated, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, God, I, I don't have the, to deal with these the, fuckers anymore. I think that's anymore. the feminist take, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like, I don't have to deal with oneself. these. Yeah, it's like, I don't have to deal with those twins. I don't have to deal with my dad being a loser. I don't have to deal with my mom blaming me for everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not raising a baby. I'm out. That's that's one of my final notes on this movie is a liberated woman is in bed with the devil, right? Because mm -hmm. that's, yeah. But we'll well, and there. that is that right. is exactly what we believe here at Film Seizure. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but but it's but it's interesting. You could you could make the counter argument that they the rest of them all actually were punished for their sins, and she was rewarded for her lack of. Yeah, I have a read on this too that we can talk about later, okay. more towards the end, but. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, yeah. So, like, they're arguing over whether, you know, the, the parents are arguing over whether or not they should have left. Um, what happened to the cup? How are we going to eat? How can we survive with these mouths to feed? Everything. And that's when um, Caleb's like, I'm going to go out and get a rabbit. <laughs> and Thomason's like, take me with you. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I promise not to say that you know it's like it, 
you know, I'm, I promise I won't get in the way. I won't be a problem. And I also won't say that I went with you. And so he is, so he agrees and she's riding a horse and he is walking alongside. Um, they're kind of having some, like, you can tell these two are close. Um, I mean, they're close in age and they're close emotionally, but he's um, also been giving her looks. Yeah, that's true. Yes, he has been noticing her. He certainly has a little bit of the sin of burgeoning lust. woman womanhood, right? Yes, yeah, right. But that, yeah. but that, but that also lends into this this fear of what do we do with her femininity at this point, right? Because she can't stay there. It's right, because both the, because I think she'd be she would be thought of as a threat to both Caleb and William. Right. Uh, right over her a, a temptress a temptress exactly yeah. yep uh which is exactly his downfall <clears throat> um anyway but that's uh, so yeah so basically uh, a um they're out with the dog also now the dog is spooked by the rabbit takes off after it which spooks the horse and the horse bucks thomason off as it runs through the woods eventually and Caleb is left alone. And then he well, ends Caleb up getting, runs after the dog. And he ends up alone and twisted around and lost. And Thomason is passed out from bonking her head on the ground. Yeah, she got thrown off the horse. Right. It's a real kind of Hansel, Hansel and Gretel. Very yes, so. Very, yes, so, yes. But, but it separates them instead of both of them mending up at the house yep. exactly but, but yeah so um so then That's one of the interesting things about this movie too like hearing eggers talk about it he said that when he was doing his research <clears throat> he was fascinated by the overlap between the the folk tales that were that were told as just stories right but then also the real accounts air quotes of encounters with witches and documented um, which is in historical documents, it was like it was all the same. It was it, they they believed truly believed the fairy tales were real in this in this period of time. Well, and I so mean, they were recounting the fairy tales as their own experience, right? Yeah, of, like, I mean, it's, yeah. In, in a way, it's it's mythology, <laughs> right? Like it's <laughs> the it's it's uh, like they had they twisted themselves into thinking that this was the reality. Mm -hmm. Uh, of why things are the way they are, why certain people are cursed or blighted or whatever. Yeah. And a we lot of women mention, died for this shit. Sorry. sorry go yes. Ahead. No, yes. And a lot, and a lot did. And I think for a not lot of not just here reasons. too, more in Europe, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot more in Europe. So many. Um, the, um, the, the, the twins, this is something that I would thought about a lot watching it this time. They keep singing this, this folk song, like almost like a nursery rhyme about black Phillip. Yeah. Right? And then Black Philip is the goat, the family goat. He's the he goat. black goat. And he's very, like, demonic. He's like Baphomet straight up, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, but and I, then I he turns I, into a, to a about, smarmy gentleman. Yes, he does. The cavalier. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, but uh, I was thinking about the, the, the nursery rhyme. I don't have all the words in front of me, but it's very, um, it's very much like a, a deification it's fucking I, spooky. Those yeah, kids and, and, are spooky. <laughs> and, and but it's 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 very much like a like they're exalting Black Philip um, um, above you know a, hu a humanity like and, like, and the thing is it's like, a deity and, and and the parents don't think anything about it. Yes, it's like it's like, happening in you, front where, of them. And it's like where did they learn it? Like, where yeah. did they learn this song and. And right. Thomason's the only one who's just like stop with the song, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will not abide your singing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes sister, I don't yes. either. <laughs> and and um, but but it's but it's it's interesting to me because I don't know. I think that just kind of went over my head the first time I I watched this. Movie. Yeah, I didn't. I that's a good point. I didn't. But really watching think it about now, it. it's like okay, they learned this from somewhere, and they learned it from Black Philip, right? If he's really talking to them, yes, yes, and. And it's it's like insidious in like in this sort of innocuous way that you don't see the threat 
coming, but if you really listen to the song, it's like, this isn't just children making up some gibberish words. And that's where I don't think mother and father are really paying attention. But right, Thomason they're... is very receptive of, out of all this weird shit that's going on. And it's all kind of getting jumbled up in her head. And it's, she kind of makes sense of it all a little bit too late. Yeah. Well, yeah. Chuck and I just watched the movie, Jason, while you were away. Where a line is spoken about how the children love evil. And that was in uh, When Evil Lurks. Oh, I mean, oh that's yeah. a great movie. That was my favorite movie of favorite horror film of last year. Oh, man, it is. Whew, it is something. It's um, amazing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, like, it's funny. That popped right into my head with the whole, we talked to Black Phillip. It's like, of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> it's like, I need to, I need to go, I need to run down to Argentina and get myself a, 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 a cleaner. And yeah. <laughs> come back and figure this shit out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway um yeah so while so while william is searching for thomason and and uh, caleb caleb comes across a little hovel which i thought it was interesting i didn't realize this and i was paying attention this time because i was doing my homework before right. and while watching this movie um i didn't realize like yeah, it is meant to very specifically that hovel is meant to kind of look like their homestead, except for just grown over like it's twisted. <laughs> um, so it is meant to be kind of mirroring each other that, you know, the evil is already settled in um, yep. that no matter where you go, whether you're in the hovel in the woods or the or the home on the prairie, it's it's evil. Mm hmm. So, yeah, and she, uh, the witch, uh, we do see the witch at one point uh, making a, like, a flying potion with the baby. Yes. And yes, she's all, like, mangled and gross. Yeah, at first I was like, oh, they just need the foreskin, don't they? But I think they use the whole damn baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, I yeah. Think so, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the whole damn baby. They don't, they don't waste any, because this isn't like, this isn't like, like uh, baby foreskins, that's not something in which. Well, stuff. it's not going to be. It's not going to be much if you're not going to get yeah, your potion think, out of it. But I think I think of the rendered fat of 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 an unbaptized infant, sure, or child at at, at all. Yes, is I a, just was, figured it was like a is hanging what allows it up them and, to fly. Yeah. You guys are thinking about this way more than I want to. Like, uh, I'm just like oh, the baby got oh, that's, yeah, turned that's, up a little yeah, bit. That's all. Uh, well, we're not we're not parents, so two to one. Too bad you're gonna have to deal with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I think the way she did it was to sever the. Never mind. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's creepy though. Like the scene, it is. it's creepy how it kind and of it, like, and it's a classic how the shadow cackling moves witch. down and the knife appears. It's like oh. Boy, this is yeah. real unsettling. Yeah, and this is yeah. and this is your good old fashioned gross witch cackling and uh -huh. all of that stuff. And but that's not what Caleb sees. What Caleb sees is no. a shapely lady, <laughs> <laughs> a very pretty what, Australian uh, model. <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah, that, the bustier is doing its work uh, anyway, um, and she kisses him and basically poisons him with a it. young witch and an old witch <laughs> <laughs> right that was the, that was all variety said in that in that paper yeah in that issue <laughs> so yeah he uh they they never they don't actually find him it's later that he returns sickly and naked yeah, and Thomason finds him at the at the post on the on the uh, you know like where the plantation or where the yeah she farm goes is. out to bed the animals and it's mm -hmm. raining and then he he kind of wanders in, um, yeah. and he's definitely he's, very he's sick naked. He's like yeah. um yeah. Or did you say that? Yeah, yeah, I said. Uh, um, yeah, and so basically, yeah, so like we see them trying like the the mom actually is doing something now. You know, she's she's doing some bloodletting. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah they didn't have they didn't have any medicine back then. Right right on like his uh temple too. Yeah. yeah. It's like Jesus. Well, it's gotta be easy for it to fall into the bowl that she has pressed against his head. Like so. <laughs> I can I don't know. How does that happen? How do how do how do you just like all right, so sometimes trial and error works out for the best. We know which <laughs> mushrooms don't kill us, right? And we know which mushrooms right. Like just make us see funny stuff and have, have <laughs> and which journeys. ones are good on your Swiss hamburger, <laughs> and then and then which ones will like make you die a horrible death? Yeah, right. right. Um, but with like bloodletting, what was that? Did somebody? No, did somebody I, I like, can tell you what it is. It's, but how did that start? I, I can tell you where I think it started. People would talk about pressure. Yeah, okay. I, I like a headache feels like, like pressure. Headache. Yeah, yeah, so like it feels like pressure on you when when you when you hurt yourself, you get a you you get a you get swollen, so it's pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So they thought, just take that out, just remove the pressure. Remove the pressure. Bada bing, bada boom, you're fixed. Because I could see that in some cases, like glancing a wound, right? Like if, if yep. it's if it's oh, you can lance it. Uh, that's still done today, like an ingrown yeah, hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely, yeah. Um, I, in, that's fact, I, I in fact, I in fact I do was, that to myself like, if I get a zit. I'll, I'll like, like a head injury, maybe yeah. like relieve. It's almost like we still to this well, day will cut uh, a, a hole in the in the skull to relieve uh, brain pressure. Especially if fluid has has is starting to to yeah. really hurt your brain. Uh, but with a but with a fever, it's our the medical poly- podcast, everyone. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to medieval. I'm podcast. not a doctor. I just talk medieval about them on podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but like I would imagine like the thought was a fever was caused by that same buildup of extra blood if blood is warm yeah. the fever must be caused by it so you got to let it out yeah that 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 tracks um i just wonder like how often that really helped and it's well very, i can tell you very, when very it didn't a help situation very much a situation where like correlation is yeah not causing well it didn't help when people thought you were possessed and it didn't help in this scenario <laughs> because right. he does, after a couple of days, die. Yeah. Uh, but before he dies, what does he do? He has some kind of crazy ass, I don't even know how to describe it, just expunging quite, words. Quite a love fest for Jesus. Yeah, that's yes. a good way to describe it. Wanting to be let into his warm embrace. Yes. And yeah, I mean, so in a way, he's kind of saving his own soul. I think is what I I I get the impression that Caleb was not damned. Well, it reminds me. Yes, that's probably if he's one of the elect, and that he's, he's getting movie, he's his, getting his, his ticket punched. He's subscribing to that as a as a possible text. Then yes. But I, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of this concept of um, religious ecstasy. Yeah. And um, I'll read the definition on Wikipedia. It's a type of altered state of consciousness categori- categorized by greatly reduced external awareness and reportedly expanded interior mental and spiritual awareness, frequently accompanied by visions and emotional and sometimes physical euphoria. Although the experience is usually brief in time, there are records of such experiences lasting several days or even more and of recurring experiences of ecstasy during a person's lifetime. That's kind of what that looked like to me with yeah. religious ecstasy. Um, it's also, um, this goes back like to like ancient Hinduism, but a lot of fundamental fundamentalist Christianity has co-opted it. Um, Gee, I've never heard of Christianity co-opting other people's <laughs> religions. I mean, I'm looking at you, it's, Norse mythology. It's like, it's like you know that meme <laughs> where, where they have all the people dancing and they put different music on top of it, and it's yeah. really funny? That's essentially like a state of religious ecstasy of those people are supposedly experiencing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, during, that, during that profession of love for Christ, the twins blame... Oh, yes. Oh, oh God! It all everything. comes out. So yeah, we should talk about that. Chuck, yeah. Tell us, so tell us how that came to be. Yeah, Chuck, go backwards a little bit in the movie. Okay, so there's a scene earlier in the movie where the twins are, or not the twins, um, just one of them. Yeah. Yeah. She, she being Anya Taylor Joy is down by the water getting water for with her Caleb. mother 
and Caleb shows up. Yeah. Caleb this is where you her. get the impression that he's, he's checking out his sister. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell this part, Jeff? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a punk. Um, but yes, he does. He does give her the look like he's looking at her chest, like the camera is centered on her chest. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say it's an impression. He's definitely like eyeing her up. But she's getting water. She's trying to talk Caleb like some sense into him, I guess, like make him happy because he's very worried. And they end up in like a little tickle fight. But that's when the, the female twin whose name I can't remember. I'm sorry. Mercy. 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 I was going to say Maddie. It's Mercy. Um, she shows up and she is saying something to Thomason. But to get her to go away, Thomason's like, hey, I'm the witch. I'm going to eat your, eat you basically like almost like the Hansel and Gretel tale of, mm-hmm. of the witch in the house that would eat you if you showed up there and blah, blah, blah. And this kind of carries forward right to the later scene. Well, she actually are... says that she took the baby too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. All that. She, she, yeah, she yeah. gave, she, she, she sacrificed it. Yeah. Yes. It I wasn't mean, a wolf. She, it wasn't boy, a talk, wolf. It was, yeah, it was me. me. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. holy cow. Talk about it's like, Maybe too soon, Thomason. And Ma- Mercy's <laughs> like, definitely dude. getting pretty freaked out. By she this. is very freaked out. But yeah. this is like a thing that an older and, and too yes. soon, yes, because it is your sibling you're talking about. But this is a thing an older sibling would do to a younger sibling. Totally, like well, sure, incite but, yeah. panic and fear by telling them something you're not. Yeah, right. right. Like to make up stories and try to scare them. Yeah, but yes. she does go one step too far. Like out of her frustration, she does say, "I took the baby." Right. And and did this, this, and this to it. Yeah. Yeah, which is which leads to the witches, end. Man, which is it leads to the end at the at this scene, and we're kind of like starting to form the picture that the, the children are being fed something by by Black Thomas, Black Philip, excuse me. Um, Thomas. <laughs> whatever. I just make up names. It's fine. That's his but, goat friend. That's but she <laughs> yes, goat friend. <laughs> But but Mercy outs her, and the twins start saying, like, yeah, it was Thomason who took the twins. And the dad's like, uh, I won't believe this without proof. And he stands up, and he's like, did you do this? And she's like, no. No, it's crazy talk. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy talk. No, I didn't do this. And then he sends her, or she runs away. He sends her out, and then he walks well, the, after Well, the mother her. yells her out. Get yes. her, get her, get away from me, or get the away. Yes, because she tries to walk to Caleb. Yeah right to and she's like don't you touch him get away from me get out of here and the twins are just like while caleb is having his thing they're like writhing in the background like Mm -hmm. crazy and they and then they are praying and the kids like i don't remember how to do the prayer and it's like this is the bullshit that that you always see in the other movies where somebody is like fingering a witch and they're on the stand and like i forgot how to pray and it's it like must blah, have blah, been, blah. it must have been under the influence exactly of and it's yeah. like it, it's but it's it's more effective here because we know those kids are creepy as fuck we also and know those kids are affected by something something yes. something yes like they talk to that black ass goat out there and it's, who and it's is all very the, creepy <laughs> it's all the mechanisms um, machinations of a black philip right exactly uh, yeah yeah and uh, he's using and, he's using circumstance to his advantage yeah and then they end up unconscious just out until yeah. until uh william picks them up and it's like shaking him it's like you fucking kids what are you talking about here or what did you know tell me you're you know wake up and stop this bullshit and then they they come to and then he just throws them all into the fucking barn with black Phillip. with black philip yeah um, like you all are hanging to hang out here yeah and until we and, figure out or, until, until we sort this whole this whole thing out <laughs> he buries caleb and then Black Philip bust out. Well, there there is like before Black Philip busts out, there is that moment where the mother climbs into the grave mm-hmm. with Caleb, and you don't know if William just buries her there. Yeah, with him, it's kind of there's there's a little bit of oh, so the mom has given up, like completely, one hundred percent, she oh. is done. Do we She's see her previously so told William that she wants to move back to England and stuff. Go ahead. Do we Jason. see her again? 
Yes. We do. We do because because she gets. There's a question I have here Mm -hmm. because this is upcoming. Go ahead, Jeff, if you want to. No, so so she she ends up having this dream because William goes away to figure out, like, okay, what's the deal with this goat? What's the deal with my kids that are still alive? She is freaking out and ends up having like a fever dream that Caleb and the little baby return. Samuel, yeah. Is it a fever dream or is it the devil? Well, it's, she her? thinks that she is breastfeeding her kids, but what she's doing is she's letting a crow pick at her, pick at her. basically eat her boob. Yeah. And it is wild because she is like euphoric. Mm-hmm. But there isn't, yes, you're right. She's euphoric, but there is mention of the book that's in front of her that she could sign mm-hmm. at this point. Yes. That I don't think she does. No, she or maybe does she does because the silver cup is in this scene. Mm, I missed the mm. silver cup. Well, it could at explain. least I think it's the silver cup. I think it's the silver cup, but I wasn't it could sure. Be, you know what? It could be a thing where she, where we could read it that she does sign it for philip or the devil or whoever whatever you want to call to get what he really wants by having her attack uh thomason you know what i mean yeah like this is kind of like an emperor situation where it's like i really want luke so fight darth vader and i get the guy i want in the end right you know what i mean yeah yeah um i don't know how i forgot this <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm pretty sure the cup is there i, I can't get a categorically say it is but i think she gets it back by maybe making a deal with the devil but during that time like the morning comes right and william walks out of the house and he sees that his barn has just been destroyed jeff i think you said the black philip escaped somehow i don't remember did he just bust through the door well there was uh, before that overnight the uh so the day before before they got locked up um thomason's working on the goat milking the goat and it starts producing or um was it was another goat i think but she, it's producing blood not milk yes yes and so that's now blighted too well that also, night when, while they're asleep yeah. the witch comes to feed off of that yeah and cackle and get creepy it's and happening then, at the same time that Catherine is having her breastfeeding exactly vision yeah exactly yeah. and so and then yeah it's like i think i think black philip busted out himself i think he yeah i think he used this horn because he's good at using them horns and, turns out. and what i mean maybe i guess the witch took the twins like we don't know yeah, the twins are gone in the morning. Thomason is still there. Yeah. Yeah, she's laying on the ground almost like almost like that famous painting where the girl is crawling up to the house. I can't remember what that one's called. Yeah. But William comes out and he's he's looking her over and I, I don't know if he says anything, but it's probably not going to be good if he does. But right as he's about to say something, Black Philip just crushes his ass. Mm-hmm. Like destroys Gores his him. ass. Gores, Gores him. him. Uh, Christina's world is the painting that you're um, thank you multiple there's times. a lot of images in movies that remind me of Christina's world like with a heroine or somebody that's kind of positioned like that go ahead Jeff multiple no times. no 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 yeah he he gets gored a couple of times uh because he he gets headbutted and he's like you know and so like William's like all right well I guess this is you know so I gotta defend myself against this crazy ass goat and then it eventually gores him with the with the horns and then he dies so thomason comes out of the barn and it's like oh because uh when when black philip gores him and then runs him against the the um firewood which he is consistently chopping throughout this movie he chops a lot of wood he sure does because it buries him in it yes um and then the mom or so like thomason comes out and then the mom attacks and she's like it's all your fault it's all your fault and so she's got to go and grab that uh bill hook thing and just start whacking her in the fucking face with that 
Yeah, she kills her. Um, she's she's the only one now. <laughs> she's the only one left, and she goes into the house and just falls asleep. She goes to sleep. A lot of people think that the movie would have been great if it ended right here. I I've read. don't necessarily agree. Mm. I don't either. I, um, I just see I think it a if lot. It, if it ends here, the movie's too short. Sure. Now I can I can argue that you don't necessarily need the final scene. But I think, I think that the the that moment of liberation though is really important. Yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't really get that. She doesn't get the release from killing her mother. No. Like she's she's not free because of that. She's free she's because free because she makes a choice here yep, coming up. She makes it's, she makes the one choice she has control over. And maybe that choice over what happens. Right. Is right. predetermined. Maybe she believes it's predetermined. Right? And if it is predetermined, it doesn't matter. Then why not just fly in the woods with the witches all naked and stuff? Which she does. Which so she does. My take on this is that because Job is mentioned by the mother earlier, that this is the story of Job from a female perspective. Everything is taken away from her. From And she did nothing from wrong. From Thomason. And she did nothing wrong. And instead of choosing God, she chooses the devil. Which is, is very kind of interesting that, that... I dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. That's that's the way I see the story. Is like you lose everything. What what choice do you make? And she took. I wouldn't even call it the easy way out. I would call it like liberation. She wanted to be liberated. Yeah. Now yeah. I do like the 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 scene in which the devil appears to her, and I swear to God, like Jason said, he's very cavalier. He looks like a college sports team's mascot. Like that's how perfect he looks. Like a 16th century or a 17th century. Uh, yeah, nobleman. Yeah. Um, but he would like what he says. I mean, it's that's delivered very creepy too. Like it's it's very clearly. You talk about grooming. That's it right there. Yeah. What does he say? Do you want to come eat? I can't even remember what he says. Oh but yeah, well, it, yeah. But it's very um, it's smarmy. It's smarmy. It's uh, it's. It's seductive. Well, the, the and the ultimate question is: Do you want to live deliciously? That's yes. it. Yeah, that's, that's it. very uh, lascivious. Mm. Yeah, I swear, Jeff nailed it. Interesting. Um, I get them every now and then. For y'all, for our our um, Christina's world is one of the two paintings. The other one being Vincent Van Gogh's Bridge at Arles probably mispronounced that, that that's hanging on the living room wall of an elegant anonymous hotel suite to which the astronaut David Bowman is transported to after passing through the Stargate. It does not appear in the film adaptation, but it is interesting. That is in the novel. As well. I love nice. it when I mention something and you go down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I've seen that painting. <laughs> it's at, it's at MoMA in New York. I've seen it. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that painting. It's very cool. Is that the same it always, painting? It always, and... it always it always kind of reminds me of um like an Edward Hopper, but the artist is Andrew Wyeth. Yeah, um, died in two thousand nine. Is that the paint? Is that similar to the painting in the uh, the bird with crystal plumage? Um, I always think of it from um, Barton Fink. It reminds me of the painting of the woman on the beach. Yeah. Um, I don't you know what I'm talking about. Bird right now. Uh, um, I don't remember either. Let me look it up. It's a woman in a field. Um, anyway, whatever. It, uh, yeah, I'm probably just probably just got my brain on the bird with the crystal plumage. I kind of want to watch that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it is on Criterion now. Is it now? Well, yeah, I've got it on Blu-ray. They have a Jalo. Ooh, Chuck, are you on that? Yes, I am. All right. <laughs> Is it oh, is it embarrassing thing. for me to admit that uh, that most of the time I go on Criterion Collection is to watch one of the Godzilla movies on there? No, it's totally cool. The totally painting cool. is not similar. Oh, okay, um, then I must have just yeah. I it mean. is sort of it's like if if it is kind of like if someone like a toddler painted Christina's world but made it scary. Okay, <laughs> yeah, because there's someone murdering the girl. Someone murdering the the girl. Yeah. yeah. 
and it's a it's a snowy pastoral scene. Not uh, okay, but I can see I can see why your mind's your mind would go there. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. So the um. So yeah. So like the 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 Satan man. Satan man. <laughs> Satan man. It says, "Hey, I've got candy." going to be delicious and you can live in that deliciosity and she's like cool sign in that fucking book yeah she says i I, I, I can't sign i can't sign my own my name and he says she's not literate yeah and he says i will guide your hand i will guide thy hand hand. of course he says it like that of course he says it like an evil man (laughs) i mean he, he should he's evil (laughs) <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah so he uh she signs it and uh black philip leads her toward the wood as she uh removes her clothing uh inside and then you know she follows black philip out into the woods where she sees the witch's sabbath Yes. And they are beginning to uh, float off the ground, and she's like, I can dig this. And she, you can tell that she's slowly lifting up off the ground, too, as she's smiling at the um, – smiling and laughing at what she sees in front of her. Pretty good stuff, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's – Good. Uh, this, uh, the, the, that, that character, Thomason, was based on Elizabeth Knapp familiar with that one Mm-mm. supposedly possessed uh, by the devil in um 1672 in the uh, massachusetts bay colony she was a uh, puritan um not familiar not sure i about feel like i've heard her story fate. before i think it's been made into a few movies but yes it's based on a true she is based on a true account of Elizabeth Knapp. Hmm. Um, the the stylized spelling of the witch with the two V's, that also comes from a pamphlet on witchcraft around that same era. Hmm. So that is why it is stylized in that way. Makes sense. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but the uh, this is a movie where I'm not surprised that the audience score is lower than the critic score. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. this is not horror in the sense of ghosts and goblins or a hockey mask man coming out and killing people. This is a horror of a really hard life. And it may be better if you're if you're willing to dive into the the mentals or whatever you want well, to call yeah, the I religion mean, and all that stuff. Well, I mean, just if you like atmosphere, if atmosphere is what scares you or what sets you into that horror mood more than, um, more than the jump scares and the cheap stuff, then this should be a success for you. I can understand why it may not be everyone's cup of tea. Right. But, um to me i am much more into the atmosphere and the mood stuff and this is dripping in that oh yeah um and it, it's also like you know like we said you know it's like there is a reasonable understanding that thomason's life in particular is really hard because you're right in between being a child and being married off at that time Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna guess that you know like yeah a lot of people would blame witches and and will accuse people of being witches but they all fit the same thing they were unmarried women who were childless you know they had no connection to anything they're kind of floating metaphorically (laughs) and you know and Thomason is at the risk of falling into an age group where you better get married soon or there's something wrong with you. Right. Um, and that's terrible. That's just terrible. (laughs) Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, like, forget about technology. I wouldn't want to live in a situation where every day 
might be a fight to fucking live, let alone having to deal with, in this case of this movie, there's some creepy shit out in the woods. There's the unknown that you're not prepared for, um, which is where all of this folklore stuff comes from is the unknown, right? It's, you right. know, it's, it's, it's all these settlements being right next to a tree line where things get real dark at night because of the trees, <laughs> you know, or whatever. It's like, you, you, it's, it, 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 yeah, it's just, it's a scary movie for all the things that I like about horror. Yep. I, I couldn't say that better. I'm in complete agreement. Um, yeah, stuff. same, same. I mean, it's just, it's such a rich movie to talk about in so many different ways. And I think the, the authenticity of it, given the, the, um, you know, the, the costumes and the, the buildings and the, even down to the, the, the animal traps, right. And things like that just lends so much, um, just adds to that that sense of that that skew that spookiness, right? Because it it feels like that this is this is this was a time and a place, and these these are stories and and transcripts and words that were said by people of the time, and yeah. that all just like makes it so much so much more terrifying to me to know that you know well, this, yeah, and, this, the, and this the foreign... was all too common in some ways, at least in the ac- ac- accusational aspect of it, right? Yeah. Right. And I think that it's time period accurate. That's foreign to us too. Yeah. Right. So it adds to that, like the kind of mystique of the, of just the film in general, because everything is odd, mm-hmm. right? Not just what's happening around them, but that just the movie sets itself self up that way because you you don't ever feel comfortable when you're even listening Mm-hmm. to people talk right the, right. the language the accents yeah the, yeah, the, yeah the period language everything yeah absolutely yeah. you know this in a way they're yeah, yeah their language yeah. i mean this is english right we can basically get the gist of what they're saying even if we don't know what every word means like did somebody say the word countenance in this because that's always yes, a word you hear when you and it's like i'm not entirely sure i know what what that means but it's a word that you would hear in this time frame but uh, the but the thing is it's like there's a harshness to the to those to the dialogue there's a harshness to the words that they used back then it comes across how a lot of people characterize especially if you've never spoken or taken the class is how they characterize german mm-hmm. where it's very cold and very harsh and it's very you know, it's, it's, they say what they mean and there's no, there's no flowery language here. Right. Um, and yeah, that, that just kind of helps a heap onto this, uh, onto this atmosphere. One other thing that I noticed, um, and it was kind of backed up by stuff Jason was saying earlier about the Puritans and stuff is that Ralph Innocent's voice or William's voice is very godlike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he is like deep the, and booming and yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost like he's speaking from the sky every time he says something, and that gives that like that feeling of the father figure who is the god of the household kind of mm-hmm. like well, it, what I don't happens know if that's, for Galactus, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but what but what is he I mean, but like what happens when God is fallible? And he is very fallible in this you know he, the whole he, family gets destroyed and the daughter goes to the devil that's well, what it, happens it, it, it reminds me it reminds me of like this uh, there, there was just i hate to kind of talk about like something so fresh and new that was re- that really happened but um and you guys probably know about this in perry township there was a former police officer who killed himself and his family just recently yeah yeah like two two girls that went to perry meridian high school um, and it's this con it's this this epidemic of it's called family annihilation and it's essentially what long legs is all about right, right? um but long legs is <laughs> it's got a lot of the same subtext as this movie in in some ways but but it's like a different sort of form of family annihilation that we're looking at here in this movie and and I find it disturbing but also interesting that this this thing, this epidemic, 
only happens in the United States. It's very rare outside the United States. Well, um, and, and what is it about like their psyche? I mean, is it, does it, is it go all the way back, you know, to, to this time period, to, to the new world? I mean, honestly, probably because our like American Christianity is unique to America. Like, yes, there are yeah. other places where like, yes, there are some Australians, some British, some Ugandans and there, you know, but that's where it's almost been exported back out after it was, after it was imported here, we changed it up and then we exported it out to a few other places. Uh, but our form of Christianity in this country is wholly different than holy that's not what I meant to say. Nailed anyway. it. But Nailed it. it is completely different than than say central northern Europe and their relationship to Christianity or to religion. Um Catholicism to an America to a person in the United States is different than the Catholics from Mexico. Yeah, I mean and the Catholics in Ireland. Catholicism in the United States is actually most of it is a little more liberal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's there are sects that aren't, but um, sure. But yeah, exactly. You're, you're absolutely right. But I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I was just thinking about that because I wrote the, that wrote it down. I wrote family annihilation down because it's been on my mind a lot lately. Um, and it's like, uh, just do like, we do we need to ask Susan to leave? <laughs> the, no, okay. No, All right. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, just like, what is it about this? Yeah, it's this. Well, I'll tell this, you. Is it? disease i mean what is it about it like what is it what is it rooted in that it keeps happening i right? cannot fathom it fathom it as a you know father of two children you know nuclear family with the dog and everything like there isn't a moment in my life where i've ever been considered hurting them right let yeah. alone you know like just hurting them let alone destroying my whole family like it's fucking wild to me like i don't get it and it breaks my heart i don't every think time most people can understand it i mean right it's, just, it's, I, it's, it's it's unfathomable you're absolutely right it is beyond any understanding but it's happening for some reason but there's a lot of epidemics. An epidemic level yeah, and but there are a lot of epidemics where normal people are fighting that urge to be a part of it, right? Like you, yeah. you can you can kind of like feel like I understand why that happened for this person. This one, I just I can't even I can't yeah. get it. If that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's a heavy movie. Um, but it is also, I mean, like it's a heavy movie. To be honest with you, it is also kind of a fun movie to watch. It is, and also I, because it you makes know, you think about stuff. I you know, like it makes you think also, about what's going on. Edgar said he didn't really set out to make a feminist movie, but when he saw that subtext, he was like, "Oh yeah, it totally is." And he has, he's like, I he embraces it rather yeah. than run from it. You know, um, so there is something there that that empowerment subtext um, that, and I love that. That he's a director that can that can still find meaning in his own work. <laughs> that yeah, he didn't I mean, necessarily intend upon. That was, I mean, like as much as I didn't. He, he allows his subconscious to 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 be like, oh yeah, that's probably something I was thinking about, but not on a conscious yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's not. It's it's not. It, not everything is meticulously planned out to. Right. Do. Or his it pride isn't going to his pride isn't going to jump in there and say, this is what I was thinking. Of right. Course. Right. <laughs> exactly. That too. Right? Um, exactly. Now I do like that. His next movie, the lighthouse is masculine. It's on the other yeah. side of it, yeah. but then the Norseman is a kind of a balance. There's Very a, much as so. the one yeah. thing I did like about the Norseman, even yeah. though I didn't care much for it was that when Taylor joy shows up in that, she's a powerful figure in that movie. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how Nosferatu is handled then. Me so. too. Me too. And maybe, maybe I need to just watch the Norseman again. Maybe I had, maybe I was too much was riding on it when I went and saw it. Cause I was like, this is the guy, this is it's the guy I like right now, you know, or whatever. But yeah. 227 cases of family annihilation in the United States since 2020. 
Dang. Yeah, that's that's what fifty two a uh, a year. That's one a week. It's every five days since twenty twenty. There you go. Wild. It is. <sighs> yep. All right. Everybody uh, go seek help. If you hear voices, don't go to a fucking church. Go to a psychiatrist. <laughs> talk yeah. to your family doctor. Yeah. They talk, will talk set to, you up. <laughs> talk to anyone. But yes, talk to a doctor. Call a hotline. So, something. I mean, don't just don't 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 let faith figure it out for you. Nope. Because it might be no. that's where it's coming from. And the people you're around. Anyway, so on that note, I think we did a pretty good job here. Yeah, it's, um, pretty, yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Hey, we're kicking off spooky season with um, some spooky stuff. Some hell yeah. Combo, some deep some deep thematic um, resonance. Yep. And um, so next uh, next week, we're going to go over to Japan. Now this, yeah. now, this is a movie I have talked about on Monster Mondays a long time ago, but you know, I was kind of thinking about it. It's like, what's more Japanese in horror than schoolgirls and weirdo hauntings? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So let, let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go check out House. Yeah. House. Um, House. One of the things about House that I love is in the trailer. It makes it look like it's such a happy movie, and it plays this like really poppy pop song that's in the movie. <laughs> it's fucking fantastic. I love it. Mm. Um, I love it. Anyway, um, yeah. So it's house. a fun one. This is yeah. a fun one. 1977's house, uh, made by a, uh, I believe was a commercial guy. Um, we'll talk about that next time. Awesome. Uh, Looking yeah. Forward so, to it. Yeah. So, uh, Getting a little fancy, but also very weird. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so that is next Wednesday, October 9th. Um, you just go over to filmseizure.com. That's where you'll find all the episodes and find out where you can follow us, where you can subscribe to the show, all of that good stuff. And then um, also at filmseizure.com this upcoming monday my monster monday show has got a slate of spooky stuff they're all monsters handled in updated or different ways than originally conceived they're all classic monsters too and i kick things off with what was my favorite movie of 2020 the invisible man nice Sweet. that's a good one it's a very good one holy cow it's a good one um so, uh, go over to filmseizure.com, check that out. And again, we got more spooky stuff going on. You go over to my website, B-Movie Anima, this Friday. Um, I, ha I always have a theme. By the way, to if you're listening to this on October 2nd, tomorrow is actually the 10th anniversary of the very first B-Movie Anima review. Um, and uh, this weekend... I not only kick off uh, the month of uh, women in danger, women in peril movies with the classic Wes Craven flick, The Last House on the Left. Nice. Uh, but this weekend on B Movie Anima, the series, the Saturday, we got four spooky movies to finish out season five, and it starts off with 1972's Asylum. My oh, wow. co-host, my uh, nurse disembodied, she says it's the best movie ever shown on uh, the movie end of the series. She might be right. Um, the first like ever it. five and a half poop out of five movies she ever did. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. So that's at uh, bmovieenema.com, uh, various other places to watch Asylum. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's go from the woods to house. And until then. I am Jeff Arbuckle. I am Chuck Moore. I am Jason Oliver, and you have been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs>